So as you can see, the open is still alive and kicking. I got a lot of questions from people asking what happened to the open all of a sudden. It's gotten some new parts when the light stuff went over to the Trek. So if we just take a quick look, the Eastern Crank is back on now with a 4D4 to chainring because I've been using this bike on the trainer a lot. I'm back on my old NV seat post. Luckily, I picked up another Burke saddle, so I'm still not giving that up. That's for sure. The GRX levers are absolutely brilliant. I love the ergonomics and I hope Shimano will keep using this kind of style in the future, even for the road group, but we'll see. Shouldn't be too far away now. As you might see, there's actually a new handlebar on this bike now. Now, uh, the new handlebar is actually part of an issue I ran into after installing the new GRX levers. And that is what I call a ghost leak. I could squeeze the rear brake, no issues, but as soon as I kept pressure on that lever, it slowly lost pressure and the, the lever just went all the way into the bar. Turns out the reason for that was the brake hose and it was in desperate need of a swap. So I will take you back inside and we can check out that whole process and I will also go over why I ended up changing the handlebars as well. So just to properly show the exact phenomenon here, as I pull the brake lever, it feels totally normal at first. The brake is biting normally, but as I keep squeezing the brake lever, the pressure slowly starts to decrease and the lever goes all the way to the bar. As soon as I release the lever, it goes back to normal and I can still brake again the first few seconds before it loses pressure again. Now, if this was an actual leak, it would not behave the same. The pressure would not go back up again, hence me calling this a ghost leak. I guess you can also call it what it really is, and that is a kink in the brake hose. And in my case, that happened at the frame hose port here. So as I squeak the brake and hold my finger on the kink, I can actually feel the hose give once the pressure builds up enough. And if I get really close with a macro lens on the camera, you can even see the growing bulge, so to speak. So there's a few reasons I think this happened. One, the internally routed 3T handlebars I've been using has the exit port under the bar. And since it comes out of a really tiny hole, it has no wiggle room for the hose. That results in a very sharp bend when I turn the handlebars all the way to the left. There's usually no need to turn the handlebar that much, but it will happen once I bag the bike for train travel. Another reason for the kink I suspect is having my bikepacking handlebar bag on. That pushes the hoses back and creates an even sharper bend when turning the bar. So the hose needs to be changed. And replacing an internally rooted rear brake hose can be quite a job with the foam sleeve and possible bottom brackets in the way. But I wanted to see if I could swap this hose with minimal hassle and not even touching the crank or the bottom bracket. So I started by removing the hose from the rear caliper. I put the loose end down a pet bowl to collect any brake fluid that would drain once I disconnected the hose from the brake lever. Uh, I was doing this inside my apartment, so I wanted to keep things as clean as possible. I did have a large plastic sheet on the floor though. I unscrewed the hose from the lever or lever, God damn it! disconnected the DI2 cables since I will be swapping the handlebars as well. With the brake lever out of the way, I cut the olive off so I could remove the hose nut, which in turn made it possible to remove the hose from the handlebar together with the DI2 cable. Since I'm swapping the handlebars, I needed to remove the front brake as well, but I will only focus on the rear brake in this video since that's the tricky part. Uh, I can say though that I didn't need to replace the hose on the front. I had plenty of length to spare there, especially since the new bars are not internally rooted. With the bars off, it was time to see if I could swap that rear hose. A quick blow job. Uh, that doesn't... No, that's not right. But yeah, just to get all the brake fluid out. You probably shouldn't do this if you're on the SRAM with the DOT fluid and all. Then I removed the hose port guide thingy and the front was ready for action. Mm, that doesn't sound right either. Move to the rear again, cutting off the olive, uh, and then I could use the hero of the day, which is the Park Tool IR 1.2 routing kit. Specifically, I'm going to use the routing wire with a small screw-like tip. 
This I will screw down into the rear end of the hose as deep as it goes or at least as deep so it doesn't come out easily. Once that was in place I could work it from the front and made sure I got out that foam sleeve as well. And all in all that was very simple and easy and with the routing tool now in the frame I should in theory be able to pull the new hose down through the frame going over the bottom bracket the exact same way as the old hose no fiddling with either crank or bottom bracket happy days so for curiosity's sake i cut the old hose right at the kink so i could inspect the damage and you can see the inner white membrane is pretty much destroyed and it even got discolored by the shimano oil comparing it to a cut a few centimeters down on the hose you can see how it should look like so it was definitely time for a new hose by the way, the Dura-Ace 9170 and the Ultegra 8070 as well as the GRX uses the Shimano BH90 hoses. They come in a few different configurations for road and mountain bike. The model number you want is the SMBH90-JK-SSR. This will include a flange hose nut that fits the Shimano road brake levers. levers. God damn it. You can of course reuse the old nuts, but the world is always better with a fresh pair of nuts. So then I just needed to screw down the routing tool down into one side of the new hose, thread the foam sleeve on from the old hose, gotta keep that rattle to a minimum. Then I could simply push the hose down into the down tube while pulling on the routing tool at the chain stay and out it comes. And again, I didn't have to remove neither crank or bottom bracket. Man, bike tools, gonna love them. Ah. From here on, it's just a question of installing everything again. And speaking of bike tools, the Shimano hose tool makes this job dead simple. And thanks to everyone for pointing out that I could adjust the hose clamping pressure on this tool. It's a pretty obvious feature that totally flew over my head in the Trek build. But that's what I have YouTube for. The frame port must go over the hose before connecting the shift levers. Levers. Urgh. So quickly got that out of the way. Steps I easily forget and I thought I was so smart this time. But wait for it, I forgot something else that you'll see soon. So the reason I got the new handlebars was not only to get a better hose angle. My 3T gravel bars has started to show some alarming marks around the clamping area. And had I seen this on someone else's handlebars, I would just assume someone had over tightened their stem bolts. But with extra light stem, I never went over the max torque of 3 Nm. And on my Uno and now my TNI, I never torqued over 4 Nm. So I have always been under the max 6 Nm for the bar itself. I will have to contact. 3T about this when I have time, but to be honest, I'm not holding my breath for a happy ending here. Anyway, the new bars are nothing crazy expensive or light. It isn't even carbon. They are the Data Gravel 100 aluminium bar. Since Data measures outside to outside, I went for the 42 instead of my usual 40 centimeters. The flare is only 12 degrees here. So a bit less than I'm used to, but I'm sure I will get used to this pretty quickly. I did look at some other carbon options, but pretty much everything is out of stock everywhere. So once I found this in stock, I pulled the trigger without much hesitation. It's definitely heavier at 254 grams, but I'll admit it feels very liberating, not caring about weight on this bike anymore. That disease is gone, totally moved over to the Amonda, right? Yeah, I only care about the weight on the Monde now. The weight is not important. My precious. Mocking up the hoses on the new bars with zip ties and testing out that I could turn the bars freely without putting too much aggressive stress on the hose at the frame entry. Once happy with that, using the brilliant Shimano hose tool again to cut the hose, installing the barb, fresh new nut, a bit of lube, I mean, uh, a bit of grease and a new hose firmly insert I mean installed in the lever and just as I finished tightening the nut I realized I forgot to put the string tubing over the hose and the DI2 cable the story of my life 
bleeding the brakes I covered so many times now. So if you want to know more about that, check the link up in the corner or down in the description. The data bars are DI2 ready, but the holes are on the drops, unlike the 3T bars. So that meant I needed a longer 120 centimeter cables going between the right lever and the junction on the left bar. And again, the Park Tool routing tool makes the routing on DI2 cables through the handlebars a really pleasant experience. I'm just happy I don't have internally routed brake hoses anymore. Never again. Hopefully. Now, since I forgot the shrink tubing, I decided to use this kind of cable organizing spiral thing. Just a very small size. Mine was a 4mm internal diameter or something like that. Not as nice as shrink tubing of course, but better than zip ties or tape in my opinion. Last new thing on this cockpit setup was the bar tape. I decided to try the Supercast Super Cush bar tape, but I can already say that this probably won't be on very long. Once it gets warmer and I start riding without gloves, I know I want something thicker. I did find it pretty nice for indoor riding with sweaty hands, but for outdoor I prefer my Pro Sport Control Tape. It doesn't hurt that I can get four sets of rolls on off the Pro Tape compared to one set of the Supercast either. But it's all down to personal preference of course. It doesn't mean the Supercast is a bad tape, just because a dork on YouTube prefers something different. Now I fully realize that this is probably not the most common issue to have, but at least now you know if you have the same weird ghost leak feeling on the brake lever, you know where to look or what to look for. Now I wouldn't call it necessary to get those tools just because you have this particular issue, but if you're like me building up your own bikes and taking care of all the maintenance yourself, having those tools is definitely a good investment makes the life on the bike and off the bike so much easier. On the bike, I don't know why. Yeah. I think that's it. Now it's time for me to ride some single track home. Wee! And yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to, I will catch you in the next one. Peace!